Another summer transfer window, another beginning to the summer transfer window, which for a lot of you is just filled with frustration about Manchester United. But please watch this video and then leave a comment after listening to what I've got to say about Frankie de Jong, about Manchester United's transfer window so far and about why, in my opinion, my frustration will change this week and why this week really is the crucial week whether we'll see there is a difference in this new United, these structural changes, this week is where we're going to find out really, truly, whether those changes have come into play. So please do watch it. And if you do enjoy it, by the end of it, please consider subscribing to United People's TV. I'd love to have you on board with the community. I try to make as many different types of videos as I do all week. So hit the notification bell as well and become part of it. But yeah, the frustration that really is bubbling. It's not even bubbling under the surface anymore. It's just full-blown kind of angry United fans, really. seeing what everybody else is doing and what Manchester United are not doing so far in this transfer window. And if you look at what our two biggest rivals are doing, obviously with Liverpool, the Darwin Nunes situation. Now I've already gone in uh, on record, I've gone in depth and spoken about it. This isn't a situation I don't think you can get annoyed with United because of the fact that we didn't sign him, but I'm just merely talking about the fact that our two biggest rivals here have made two key signings. Liverpool haven't announced the Nunes situation, but they will at some point. And of course, City have signed Erling Haaland. Two major transfers. And for a lot of United fans, they're sitting there going, how is it that City can go and get Haaland? How is it that Liverpool can go and get Nunes and United can't do anything with De Jong? What is taking so long? The first thing I want to say about that situation is, when, let's go to the Nunes transfer. Nunes was always leaving Benfica. Nunes was always going to join the club. We paid the highest price. Manchester United decided that he was not a 100 million pound, sorry, euro investment for this summer. I tend to agree with them. I think they inflated the price of Nunes to cover for the fact that 20% was going to Almeria, the club that they signed him from because they had the, really, the, the sell-on fee. With the Haaland situation to City, that's obvious. I don't really need to tell you why that was so simple. There was a release clause in that contract. Man City were willing to pay Obviously, anybody would have been willing to pay the 70, was it 75 million euro there or thereabouts for Haaland. And he's gone back to the club, his dad. But Haaland was always going City. Those two transfers, in my opinion, were pretty damn straightforward. Not that I'm trying to give excuses to Manchester United. I just want to give you some context because I think it's really important to understand here. With this De Jong situation, nobody at the start of the summer would have ever looked at Frankie De Jong as a legitimate transfer target for Manchester United. I don't think so anyway. All a bit surprised when the news came out. It came out on the night that Man United won the FA Youth Cup and Ajax won the title. It came from Gerard Romero from Barcelona and everybody was like, what? Huh? Took us all by a surprise. An excited surprise. But with Barcelona, we've all known this summer, and this is why it's taken, I think, it's taken quite a while to get to this point. Well, we've had the bidding, and that's where, as I said, trust me, my frustration will change by the end of this week, and I, I would explain why. But the Frankie de Jong situation is nowhere near as straightforward as the Haaland situation or the Nunes situation. They're a club that is in financial disarray. De Jong wants to stay at Barca, but they might have to sell because of financial ruin that they're effectively in. And I've explained all of that in a, in a lot of detail here on United People's TV. But it's that situation which has caused delays to getting to this point. To this point here, where Manchester United are putting the first bid in for Frankie de Jong. But here is where things have to change, all right? I don't think really United fans should be too, frust too frustrated with what's gone on so far. It's the 13th of June, people. Calm yourself. It's right at the start of the transfer window. That literally, officially only opened on Friday. But here is where I think the frustration will be justified. And let me explain that. Because Manchester United put in that opening offer for Frankie de Jong on Friday. 60 million euros plus 10 million in add-ons. And Barcelona turned down that bid. United always knew they were going to turn down that bid. What happens in negotiations? Like you're going to buy a house, you'll probably try and go a little bit cheekily on the asking price. On the off chance, they might accept it. In reality, you're probably going to be willing to pay the asking price. We all know that Barcelona want 85 million euros and then reports of course after that first bid came in there that Manchester United have offered 70 we saw several reports saying that Barcelona wanted 100 they were high balling we were low balling it's going to be in the middle 
But here is where it has to change for Manchester United, right? Because now we're seeing reports here. Manchester United are willing to move on to other targets if they continue to be frustrated by Barcelona's valuation of Frankie de Jong. And it is understood they have held talks with the representatives of potential alternatives. And we're also seeing separate reports that Manchester United do not agree with the valuation of Frankie de Jong. This is where we need to see change. It's this point in the negotiations where United have been so crap for so many years. And this is where we have to see real change. I think up until this point, trying to get too pissed off and trying to get overly frustrated at what United are doing in Ert, we started early. Ten Hag came in early. It's the 13th of June. I don't really think there's any justification for getting massively, massively frustrated at what's happened so far. But from this point on, we can't be hearing and seeing stories of this. I said to this on the live stream, said, look, Manchester United, we've already put that first proposal in. Oh, Saturday's gone by. Sunday's gone by. It's now Monday. Where's that second bid from United? Within 72 hours? Absolutely, that second bid should be going in because we cannot afford to see a repeat of this. We all know what went on with Jadon Sancho. We, waited, we, we wasted a whole summer chasing a player who we knew was unattainable because of the price. Dortmund didn't want to sell Sancho that summer, so they put a price to have 130 million on him. Yet we still tried and tried and tried. We're left empty-handed. And it cost us. It really cost us because we then weren't negotiating elsewhere. I mean, it's not as if he's the only player we've done that with. We got two bids rejected for Fabregas. We tried to go in with a third one. What did we end up with? Marouane bloody Fellaini for more than his release clause on transfer deadline day. And it's here where we have to see a change. I've, I've been singing the praises of the changes behind the scenes of Manchester United. But John Murto, man, it's from this point onwards where I think every United fan will have every single reason to be frustrated if things don't change. Because we cannot afford this summer to have a Jadon Sancho transfer saga repeated. We cannot afford this summer to have a Cesc Fabregas transfer saga repeated. We can't be sitting here hearing reports that Manchester United are frustrated by the valuation of it. They've got a player that they don't particularly want to sell, but they have to because of their financial ruin. You're going to try and take advantage of that and lowball him and get... What's more valuable to Manchester United this summer? Getting each player for 5 million euros cheaper than maybe you want to pay? Or getting this man, his team, in before the preseason starts and settled? What we need at Manchester United this summer is a settled summer. I don't know, settled is the wrong word to describe what we need this summer. But we can't afford to just let everything drag on and for this man to not really know who his squad is. So that's why I said, I think up until this point, I think the frustrations that a lot of United fans have had towards the Frankie de Jong situation, towards the start of the transfer window for United, I think it's a little bit exaggerated. I massively think it's exaggerated. And you see what's going on with, with Nunes in Liverpool. You see what's going on with City and United. And then you look at United, and, sorry, City and, and Haaland. And then you look at United and go, ah, oh, we're a shambles. Absolute shambles of a club. Why are we not doing it? A Haaland deal, straightforward release clause. Boom, always going there. Nunes... Benfica are always going to sell 100 million. I think you all agree is overpriced for Nunes. For someone who's had one breakthrough season in the Portuguese league, 100 million, no chance. And then, of course, we all got the reason that the Frankie de Jong situation escalated to where it got to out of nowhere was because Gerard Romero from Barcelona, a journalist, said that it was 95% done. So we had the expectation of it being done very quickly and therefore it's felt like it's dragged, whereas in reality... Barcelona, they don't want to sell him and they're still trying to raise funds elsewhere so they don't have to. But there's a, been a reality and an acceptance that, shit, we really might have to. And that's why it took so long for this first bid to go in. But obviously something changed on Friday. And that's why the first bid went in. But from this point onwards, we can't be hearing and seeing reports that Manchester United are going to sort of just slowly go through the process of getting that get the fucking second bid in now man get it done we cannot be having a sancho part two a fabregas part two get this man his squad early as possible that's what we all wanted to see this summer and i still think we can get plenty done 
before our preseason tour starts in a month's time. First game against Liverpool, I think, in Bangkok. I, I, I can't remember. I think it's that one. And John, Murto, it's up to now. We need to see something different in our negotiations tactic. I'm not just saying pay all the clubs what they want to. You have to hold face. You have to be able to negotiate properly, right? Or we won't get anywhere near the right amount of money for players being sold as well as getting players in for the right prices. But this isn't the point where you drag your feet. This is where we have to see change from Manchester United and change from John Murto and creating that change for Eric Ten Hag's squad. Up until this point, I think a lot of the frustration has been exaggerated. But from this point onwards, I'm going to agree with you. If United don't change and switch up this week and get these negotiations, get the second bid in, and we start, and we start hearing more of this frustration, then I'll really start getting angry. And I won't believe that United are really going to change. I wanted to say that. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure there are many of you that are more frustrated than I am at this point. But I want to try and temper that. And I hope I've explained exactly why in this video. You can let me know whether you agree with me in the comments below. And I'm pretty sure that not all of you will. You know, that's what the transfer window does, right?